Welcome to lesson two of chapter two, where we'll be looking a little closer at representations of growth and decay when it comes to exponential functions. So start with our goal here is to revisit a little bit of what was covered in math one, about how to represent exponential change within context of some real world situations. And that's where we're gonna start off with with our warm up problem. So in this situation, we have this girl Priya who borrowed $160 from her grandmother. And she each month she pays off one fourth of their main balance that she owes. So we have two, two questions to answer here. So re read through both questions and think about how you'd answer each one for about five minutes and then answer each one in turn as we uh, go through it. So for starters, number one, what amount will Priya pay in the third month? So if we are starting out with 160 in our, after zero months have elapsed, after one month, if we take away a fourth of 160, we'd be at 120. If we take off a fourth of 120, that would be taking off 30 of 120. So that would be 90. And then if we take off a fourth of 90, if we do 90 divided by four, that equals, as we all write it up here at the top here, 90 over four equals $22.50. So if we take away 22.50 from 90, we would get that they, she now has $67.50 after the third month. So we would have zero months, one month, two months, three months as our uh, pattern that we have developed here. So we have an expression, 160 times 3 fourths to the third power. And our, the question asks us to determine why that expression represents the balance that is left over. So if we think about kind of representing this, so basically after the first month, if we just write first month over here, will we be doing three fourths, or we could do 160 and multiply it by three fourths. So if we take away a fourth, we'd be multiplying and finding three fourths of 160. That was what equaled 120. So then for our second month in this situation, we would be doing that same thing and finding three fourths of that result. So three fourths of this would be the 90 that we had before. And then the third month that we have, we would have all of the same thing from just a second ago times that. But then we have to multiply by three-fourths again. And that equals $67.50. And you can see we multiply by three-fourths once, and then twice, and then three times. If we look at the function itself, we can see the 160 is representing the initial amount. We have the 3 fourths is representing how much is being taken away. So we're finding 3 fourths of 160 each time because we're taking away a fourth. So we could almost write it as 160 times 1 minus 1 fourth because we're taking away a fourth from this a one, the whole thing. And then we'd be doing that for three months. So the three that we were looking at right there is representing how many months that have happened. And so if we wanted to make a, just a, a small table here of what, we, what went on, we could write one as month and then we could write our second table as amount paid. And our third column would be amount owed kind of after paying off that certain amount. So zero months in, we've paid zero dollars and it's 160 we still owe. And so now if we had 
one month in, well, we would have paid $40 or one fourth times 160. And that ends up being equal to $120 left over or three fourths times 160. And then the same thing goes for a woman who was two months. This was 30 because we found one fourth of the amount owed, so 120 from over here. And then we could figure out the amount owed here was 90 earlier because that's three fourths of three fourths times 120. So you're kind of taking the amount owed from the prior month, moving it down, finding a fourth of that, and you're basically taking away the fourth. And then you do that again, a fourth of 120, take away that which is 30, you take away that 30 from the amount and you get amount owed. And that is showing that it's kind of changing by that same factor. So you're multiplying by three fourths every single time. That's what it makes it a geometric sequence or an exponential sequence or exponential pattern, I should say. So now moving to our part two here, we have a tuition cost at a college that we're going to be analyzing and kind of looking for the exponential parts of what is happening. So it says that the tuition at a college was $30,000 in 2012, $31,200 in 2013, $32,448 in 2014, and they're increasing by the same percentage every single year. So if we want to analyze what is happening in this situation, we need to figure out, well, what do each of these numbers mean? So the 30,000 is representing our initial amount. The 1.04 is telling us that's basically what is known as the growth factor. Is the 1.04. That is how much we are multiplying by each and every time. So we know that it's a geometric sequence. We know that it is an exponential fat uh, pattern because it has a constant growth factor. It's always 1.04. And the T is just representing how many years it's been since the year 2000. So T equals 1 would be 2001. And we would. Uh, the 2012 would be, say, 12 in this case. Oh, well, so then so the year 2000 is just the, the percentage increasing since then. T is actually the number of years since 2012. So we'll just like, ignore that for, for now. So as far as percent increase in tuition from year to year, so that's where the 1.04 comes into play. So 1.04 as a percentage would be 104%. So you can break that into 100% plus 4%. So that's how we know that the plus 4% is how much the percentage increase is going to be in this particular scenario. So now C of 3, which I guess is kind of the equation we're using here. So C of 3, what that is telling you is we're just using our function to figure out after three years what it would be at. Because we know we have one year later is 2013, two years later is 2014. So the next one would be 30,000 times 1.04 to the power of 3. So 30,000 times 1.04 to the power of 3, we got $33,745.92. So that is our amount after three years has happened. So now if we're thinking about 2007, so 2007, if we take away 2007 from our year zero of 2012, that is five years ago in the past. So if T is years since 
2012 we saw earlier, well, 2007 would be negative 5 for t. So negative 5 is equal to t. So if we wanted to write an expression here, well, how we'd write it would be 30,000 times 1.04 and then to the negative 5 years. And we can use our calculator to evaluate that. And that's going to end up being 30,000 times 1.04 to the power of negative 5. Well, that means that four, five years beforehand, in 2007, is 0.81 at the end there. So $24,657.81 in 2007. Moving right along, it's important to remember like all these different parts. So like growth factor and percent increase and decrease. You could also have that same thing being in a decrease in percentage in the same way. We evaluated an expression at a certain year amount and then we kind of look backwards. So depending on the situation, that backwards thing may not make a lot of sense in certain scenarios or the answers we get may not be realistic. But in this case, if we know that zero is the year 2012, 2007 would be the year negative five. And this model works out well for us in this situation. So now we're going to look at some graphs of some exponential functions. So we have in these uh, different parts here, we're going to look at a little closer at each of these graphs. And we're going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little bit easier as well. In this scenario at the top, we, you can't read it right now, but it says a small business bought a van for $40,000 in 2008. The van depreciates by 15% every year after its purchase. Which graph correctly represents the value of the van as a function of years since its purchase? Be prepared to explain why each of the graphs could not represent the function. So I, I wrote the point. It's a little hard to see there and then we have uh, kind of y-intercepts for each of them so as far as just using the y-intercept we know that 40,000 should be our initial value and we are depreciating by 15 percent so we could write a, a, an, a function for that kind of using what we just talked about so 40,000 is going to be our initial amount and then we're going to multiply it by a 15 percent depreciation which means 15% less than 100%, and then raise that to the power of x. So what we could kind of convert that to decimals first, so it be 1.0 minus 0 0.15 to the power of x. And then we could just kind of think of that in terms of a decimal. So we have 0.85 as our function there. So we want one of these graphs to look like $40,000 times 0 0.85 to the power of x. So if x was 0, that would mean 0 0.85 to the power of 0, which is just 1. So when x is 0, y, so when x equals 0, y should equal 40,000. And remember that the y values here are in thousands. We can get rid of this graph here because it's starting at 30k right there. And then we can also get rid of graph A because that is increasing in value. We want one decreasing in value like these two. So to tell apart which one, we just need to put x equals 1 into our function. So if we grab our calculator, if we do 40,000 times 0.85 to the power of 1, we get the answer of 34,000. And that means that 1 comma 34,000 should be one of our values that we are looking to find. So we can see the graph of our function right there. And let's zoom out a little bit so we can see our questions for this part as well. So now we can see everything. 
So in number two, find the value of the van after eight years after its purchase. Show your reasoning. Pretty easy if we know our function earlier. 40,000 times 0 0.85 to the power of 8 would be our function there. So our answer would be 40,000 times 0.85 to the power of 8. And that would be $10,899. So we can point and 62 cents. So $10,000. 899 and 62 cents. All right, so now in number three, in 2008, we bought a second van that cost $10,000 less, so 30,000, and going down by 10%. So our new function, so our, our new function now is y equals $30,000 to start with. And it is only going down by 10% every year. So we're getting 90% of our what we're starting out with. So it'd be 0.9 instead. And so we know that our first van was $10,000, about $10,900 after eight years. So this one after eight years, that is going to end up equaling 30,000 times 0.9 to the power of eight. And that ends up being equal to $12,914 approximately and is definitely worth more than the first van. And so if you kind of looked back up at our graph here, will it be 30000 right there? And then after, I mean, we can put it in a one there and we can plot a point. So it basically would be kind of going down in a certain same kind of decay sort of fashion. And they would kind of meet somewhere between five and six. So it would be something like that, where it was a new graph. So that kind of takes care of that activity there. And we've seen two different appreciation examples. So moving on to our lesson synthesis here. We have a car, just like what we just looked at, the car is $20,000 in value and losing 20% every single year. So when you have that happening, you are looking at your years going up by ones as time moves forward. But then we, since we're losing 20%, well, that means that we are basically doing 100% minus 20%, which is equal to 80% of our value. And that's why we're going to multiply by 0.8 every time. So times 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.8 for each of those. And we have this value, right, this function right here, where our function of this table is we have our first y value, and we are multiplying each of those y values by the same thing, t for time. And we could also write it as a fraction if you prefer that instead and that would be four-fifths to the power of t. And that is basically how you'd approach a percentage decrease or increase. If this was gaining 20% of your value, well, that would just be 100% plus 20%, which would be 120%. And that would be kind of the opposite direction. We'll look at a kind of applicable problem for a situation. So in this case, we have 24 flu cases in a in a certain hospital in a city. And in the five weeks that followed, it has grown exponentially. So we can see that we have our graph right here. So our two points are 0, 24, and then we have 1 and 36. So in order to figure out the, which of these functions would represent our situation, we need to think about what is happening. So we know we have exponential growth because this, this, they are increasing at, over time. 
And so we know that it's not going to be choice C. That is linear. That is not what we have. So in order to figure out the change, well, we know we are going up by 1 here. But then exponential, we need to be able to multiply something to get from 24 to 36. So the way we can do that easily is just by doing 36 divided by 24. And 36 over 24 is equal to 1.5. And that means that our growth factor is this 1.5. And you can always do that with your y values on a point when you're making an exponential function. So our growth factor is 1.5 to the power of x And I don't, it doesn't seem like there's a difference between B and D. They look the same. So I'm not really sure what the difference between those is, but it, it is, in fact, uh, choice B here. So that is the function that we can find that would work for these. And so if we wanted to figure out, well, after five weeks, how many cases there are going to be, well, we would know that it would be 24 times 1.5 to the power of 5 and 24 times 1.5 to the power of 5 is 182.25 and that is uh, going to be our number of cases after five weeks and that is definitely below 300 and that seems to answer our uh, question here and that kind of concludes our lesson today on analyzing exponential functions growth and decay using percentages and also multiplication in this last example. Thank you for watching.